Jim Laranega joins us, the 2013 ACC Tournament Champion. Great to see you as always. Congrats. Good to see you guys. How you doing? I can't believe it's been seven <laughs> years. <laughs> Just like yesterday. Although, you know, when you look at the league, the team, the, the league is so well balanced. I, I, I know the Dukes and Carolinas, but, you know, Duke hasn't won a regular season mm. since I've been in the league. Uh, Virginia, Carolina, now Florida State. And, you know, got a lot of good teams, a lot of good programs. And hopefully our Miami Hurricanes will get hot in this tournament and be able to make some noise. You know what? Your teams have played well in the tournament. I mean, yeah, one, one yeah. of the best bar bets for any ACC fan is the fact that these Miami Hurricanes have won at least one tournament game in nine out of ten years. Yeah. There's not a lot of folks that would buy in and they go, what are you talking about Miami basketball? Yeah, consistently good. You know, and, and, uh, when we first got to, to Miami, they had mm -hmm. never had a regular season winning record. And then we went, I think, seven straight years with a, a, a winning record. The last two have been tough. Mm -hmm. We've been kind of in a transition. And quite honestly, I think next year we're going to be able to make some serious noise. You are in a spot where uh, your team is so good with zero on the floor. Yeah. And I know he did not play Saturday against Syracuse, yet your team found a way to win. By the way, a record 14th ACC overtime game this year in conference play. With or without Chris Likes, what's the difference in your team? Well, with Chris Likes, we have a catalyst, someone who can ignite us, someone mm -hmm. who is uh, a high-octane scorer, but also a tremendous threat defensively to harass the opponent's right. point guard. With Without him, we get a little bigger. And actually against Syracuse, that helped us because size against their size – because Syracuse's zone is so big. Mm -hmm. And neither team shot the ball very well on Saturday. But uh, we found a way to win the game. And our guys left there feeling like, uh, hey, we got a bye in the first round. That's pretty good for us right now. Yeah. You know, when you consider the pecking order for the league and the history of college basketball, where would Miami's basketball program fit in with the history of the ACC? Well, we're one of the newest members. We didn't have a winning record in basketball in, until 2011. And now we've just started over these last nine years to make a name for ourselves. Yeah. And I think year 10 could be one of the best years ever for our basketball program. I, uh, let me, I want to interject this real quick. You have seen this event, and Mark and I have spent the last day or so yesterday in Charlotte and today here talking about this event in this building. You sat on the bench with Terry Holland. You've seen this event in this building. Is it different here, Jim, than it is other places because of the history Greensboro has? I would say because the, the, the league originally was a North Carolina-based league mm -hmm. with Duke, Carolina, Wake Forest, and NC State going at it in the Big Four tournament. Yeah. Who in the heck wants to play your conference teams <laughs> in December? <laughs> And then have to play him twice during the regular season. Then again in the tournament, and only one team is getting into the big dance. Yeah, right. So the history is here. But my first game, my recollection of, of Greensboro, I sat on that baseline <laughs> in 1974 oh, wow. to watch oh. NC State beat Louisville. That's how small the venues were just in the Greensboro Coliseum. Our Davidson team played an exhibition game against Wake Forest on an 11-foot basket. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many shots were made that day? Zero. No one made a shot. They thought, like, hey, if we raise the basket, it takes away the big guy. It's the opposite. Everybody misses, so you got to have big guys to rebound. So what ends up happening is the, 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 the Final Four wasn't even sold out. They gave tickets to the teams who played in the exhibition, Davidson and Wakes, players and coaches, got to sit courtside. Now I sit in the rafters. <laughs> What's more likely to happen? We go to 11-foot baskets where we bring back the big four. Well, you <laughs> tell me the answer to that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Neither, right? You know, you're nine and five in this building. Nice. Not Let's bad. try to go ten and five. Well, you know, but the point of it is that this is a feel good. I mean, you talk about the old school tobacco road teams and Greensboro and the old ACC, but you know, here's Miami that we thought was going to be a football team, football school joining the league, but your basketball success has been out of sight. And in this building, 
nine up and five down is not bad. Yeah. Do, do you guys know, and this this is a trivia question for all our, our Miami fans, mm-hmm. how many sports any athletic team has sold out every season ticket at, for any season? Do you know who's done it? Basketball. Basketball is the only sport we did yeah. it three years in a row. Yeah. And now we're trying to head back and, and climb that mountaintop again. You know what? I remember your first year in the league, and we were doing all the interviews with the coaches. And I still mention this on radio today. I said, you know, that Jim Laranega told us, eyeball to eyeball, hey, I'm going to be out giving out pizzas. I'm going to do whatever mm-hmm. I can get just to get somebody yeah. to come see our games. And now look where you are. You know, it, you you guys have history because you've been in this league for so long. Your families have been in the league mm-hmm. and all that. But when my staff and I moved to Miami, there were some other broadcasters like Tony Cor- Kornheiser yeah. blasted the University of Miami's <laughs> athletic department for hiring an old man at 62 years old. Dude, you're not saying old. he's going down there to retire. Hey, I'm one of the younger guys in this league. <laughs> you got Bayheim's five years older than me, Shashevsky, Leonard Hamilton. But this is a league with a lot of experience. And yeah. the coaches, not with the players. Yeah. Everybody's got new young guys every year. It makes it very interesting, but it's also making it real challenging now that we're at 20 games for the NCAA selection tournament and the mm. media to try to decide how good our league is. Because we're so young early, it takes us a while to get our feet on the ground. So I know we had seven new players this year, trying to get them acclimated to our system and our culture. A real challenge. Next year, we should have a veteran team. That's why I said we we should be better. Uh, I want to spend a quick moment here on tomorrow, obviously, at noon against Clemson. It's been a long time since you played them, to be honest. I mean, New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Uh, also, I know you said Saturday prior to the game, Chris Likes was indefinite. Can you tell us where he is going to tomorrow yet? Do you know? Uh, I, I don't know for sure for the game tomorrow, yeah. but we're going to give him give him the green light to try some stuff today. Okay. And let's see how he does, how his body reacts. He took one heck of a blow, uh, but he is one tough competitor. Oh. He'll take on the big guys. He'll take on He's, yeah. anybody. He's a relentless competitor. You know, when, when we had him on the show a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned, I said, you know, remind me of Allen Iverson. And sure enough, Coach, he pulls up his shirt. He's got an Allen Iverson yeah. T-shirt on. I mean, it's a, he is a tough dude. Like you said, it doesn't matter how big the other guy is. You know, one of the things about being that size, he's been that size forever. Yeah. Tall guys, they keep growing, and their their coordination and stuff changes their body really changes a lot. Mm-hmm. Chris has been that size and has played this kind of basketball since he was in the seventh and eighth grade. And so his game is very well coordinated. He's a tremendous athlete. If he were bigger and, and had this kind of uh, athletic ability, he, he would be out of sight. Well, I'll tell you what, he's been dynamite to watch. I mean, he's just been awesome to watch. And what a terrific player for your program. And, by the way, we touched on this when I saw you at Notre Dame. You've had Angel Rodriguez. You've had Shane Larkin. You've had Chris Likes. You've got quite a lineage of point guards coming through that program. And I think that's how you win. You know, in college basketball, and maybe even now in the NBA, everybody's gone to perimeter players. Yeah. All right? Small ball, three-point shooting. And so your size – uh, uh, is not the significant factor that everybody's talking about. We don't hear about the Twin Towers, except in our league. We've got a lot of teams that yeah. play big. Yeah. But but for the most part, you see the Houston Rockets has gone with five perimeter players. So we're not quite in that that category, but Chris Likes is certainly a handful for any any team's defense. Well, we appreciate you joining us. And, and, and tell Fish and Caputo and, and Bill that we're not going to – we won't do too many live look-ins here in the next hour, we promise, yeah. okay? They can scout us. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we don't change. The coaches scout each other yeah. so well. Brad Brunell just called and said, hey, I got a tight shot on camera too with what's working on Lux. <laughs> Jim Laranega, great head coach of the University of Miami with us on Packer and Durham. Stay tuned. More to come from the Greensboro Coliseum.